Hi, my name is Jessica Lannon, and I am the illustrator of The Lost Package, written by Richard Ho and published by Macmillan Kids. And today, in honor of National Postal Workers Day, I'm planning to paint a little demo of this postal truck, which was my model that I used in the book, and it will be my model today. So I've started with my drawing already complete because I don't have quite enough time to do everything in this video. So we're just going to do the painting part, and I guess I'll start there. So I've drawn my truck, I'm doing kind of a front view of it sitting, and maybe this could be a parking lot or something like that. And I'm going to stick with a gray, just kind of a gray day. I wanted to do a, a um, something like a sunset, but I would need a better re reference photo for that. So it's gray outside right now out the window, so I'm going to go with that and just use this nice big brush to put in something that could be clouds. And bring it down. This is a squirrel hair brush. Sorry, squirrels. It's very soft and holds a lot of water. And it's great for covering big areas quickly. Great. I'm going to let that dry. And in the meantime, I will move on to doing other things. So what I like to do at the beginning when I'm making a painting or even a drawing is to look at the values I see. So, or tones, that, that means what's the lightest light, what's the darkest dark. And to my eye, the lightest light is on the top of the hood and on the roof of the car or the truck here. And then there's also a highlight there. And these white surfaces aren't actually true white. Um, they have a little bit of color. So especially on the side here. <laughs> Sometimes I clean off my palette. Uh, a lot of times I don't. <laughs> and I just kind of roll with it. Unless it's really the wrong colors, then I might clean it off. Or if I'm, I have a lot of spare time. Is that the, so this side, it seems to be a little bit darker. So often we think of objects as white, but if you really stop and look at them, you'll find that frequently they aren't white at all. <clears throat> they have all sorts of colors in them reflecting up from the ground like a surface that faces down slightly might have a reflected color from the, the grass or the, the dirt it might be slightly warm in tone so that's what I'm gonna go with here is that this forward facing surface is a little bit warmer it has light reflecting from the roof and then on the side here, it looks a little bit cooler. And sometimes I like to exaggerate that effect just a bit. My background isn't dry yet, so I'm gonna leave it alone. I might do the foreground just to give myself a baseline for the rest of the truck's details. The foreground is probably road surface like asphalt or something like that. Maybe a little darker. I have some gray here on the side. It, <coughs> I don't have enough color wells for all the colors I'm using. So it has its own spot on the side here. I'm going to go ahead and paint over all the dark parts of the truck because that won't matter. I'm going to go over them again anyway. And I think there's another wheel back there, so I'll just do this. And this effect is what's called dry brush, where you 
don't have much pigment or water in your brush and it will well not pigment but water it will show a lot of the texture of the paper this paper is what's called rough press so it has a lot probably the largest amount of texture of any paper you can also get cold press and hot press hot press would be the smoothest cold press is kind of in between all right I'll leave that alone let that dry and I'm gonna work on the reflections that I see in the window that's kind of tricky because they're not very they move around a lot I'm just going to give an impression of them. I see a lot of gray. I'll let that dry before I do more to it. And maybe do some mid-ground here. Somet sometimes I'm jumping around <laughs> because I'm trying to let things dry. If you're really in a rush, you can use a hair dryer. some plants or grass back here. This is the very scientific poke test to see if it's dry enough. <laughs> Not quite. If this were a larger piece I would tape it down so it wouldn't warp. It is warping some but I think it's okay. The background's pretty dry so I'm gonna go ahead and use some more of this brownish gray put in some buildings. Buildings in the distance. Maybe this is a city. I don't live in a big city, but maybe you do. I don't know. A lot of the mail postal sorting facilities are in large cities. So that's where a truck like this might be. This might be the kind of truck that would take your packages from the mail sorting facility to the airport to be shipped, air mail, or maybe a freight truck if you were ordering something and it was very large, might be a freight delivery. I think there are names for all these different trucks, but I don't know what this one is called. All right, well, there's a background. I think that's helping to show where this, this white truck, helping to define it. This truck has a lot of chrome, and the funny thing about chrome is that it's both light and dark. So I'm going to try to keep the light parts light and add some dark on the side of it. It's actually kind of bluer. I don't know what I'm doing here. This is pretty dry, so I'm going to do the logo, which is a bright blue color. Use a little bit of maybe two different blues. This one's a lot more green. And maybe all the blues. I just mix things together kind of randomly. <laughs> I used to be much more conscientious about it, but I. switch to brush with a better tip. Actually, this one's kind of dull. This one's really sharp. A lot of watercolor painting is just getting to know your pigments and your brushes, your materials really well. At least for me. Because when you apply the paint, it's a lot darker and more saturated than when it dries. And in order to not overwork it or have to go back again and again with wash after wash, you need to know exactly how much it's going to change as it dries. And the only way I can do that is through lots of repetition 
getting to know my paint very, very well. And then you develop a kind of instinct for it. At least that's how it feels to me. I don't know, everybody's, everybody's different, so. All right, that's USPS logo. We deliver for you. So these words are very small, so I'm just gonna kind of give the impression of them because I can't write every little word. And then there's a blue line and a red line. Blue line. Oops. Look before you paint. And a nice bright red. I'm gonna use this one. This is my brightest red. What you don't see is that I'm wiping my brush frequently on this rag to control the amount of water. Um, for me, the rag is essential. All right, and then I'll do little orange. While I have this bright red out, I'll do some little orange stuff. Let's see what we got. Everything is turning green. This is why you should keep your palette nice and clean and organized, which mine is not. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do the darks because that's what we're missing. I'm missing my darks. And I'm gonna have to do a couple layers of this. One just to get the tone down, and then another for the details. Start with that. Overall shape. I'm trying to look at it as one shape instead of a lot of different shapes. And simplify my darks into one coherent whole. And then the other thing I'm going to do is blend them into my road because there's a shadow left by the truck. And I'll do the same thing across here to the other wheel. Voila. Shadow under the wheels. I liked that bit of brown. Maybe I'll put some more of that. Blur this out a little more. If this is dry enough, I can do the the grill. That's a little wonky, but that's okay. Fortunately, this truck doesn't have to drive anywhere. I'm trying to go quickly. They told me I have 15 minutes for this. Okay. Usually it drives really quickly but it's raining outside right now, so the humidity is much higher, which is not something that we get, have a lot of problems with in Colorado. Usually it's very dry here, but today is rainy, and that's gonna affect how I paint, because it changes the way the paint acts on the paper. So part of the fun of watercolor is that you don't really know what it's going to do and it, it can change from day to day and change depending on where you are and what the weather is like. It's really often an adventure.
these are just the last details on the wheels to help them stand out. And I think that'll do it. I'm going to call that done. The last thing you can do is sign your work if you wish. It's hard to sign with a brush, but there it is. One USPS truck at your service. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for your support.